commonplace word. A container for sentences and phrases which strike me as fine and worthy of my thoughts and motivations. Not all that explicit, a touch of wonder to it all. I have a desire to combine these thoughts which have made an impact on me. I like ambiguity. I want a world of possibilities. I don't want to be strict, but to allow multiple meanings. Countries with fluid borders, simply a nod from the border patrol as you pass from zone to zone, an acknowledgement rather than a bureaucratic stamp. I'd like to quote my cousin Dick, who recently wrote, I don't claim to know that my thoughts here are the truth, but I do have confidence that they are. Also, here's a quote from Matilda Marcoli, the author of a book entitled, entitled Lumen uh, Naturae. I have often seen scientifically trained colleagues express a complete incomprehension of modern and contemporary art. Comments like, a child could do that, which one would not normally expect to hear from a reasonably educated person, are uh, all too frequently uttered. Yes, a child who knows random processes and non-Euclidean geometry, gestalt psychology, and the scientific theory of chromatic systems could probably do it. <laughs> <laughs> the artworks are the result, for me, of a lifetime of reading various topics, including art, science, philosophy, and literature, and the innate desire to build something concrete using that knowledge. I've spent thousands of hours developing the techniques which suit me at this moment, being able to gauge the drawing time of one paint versus another, how heavy I can load a brush without dripping, mixing what seems to me the best color for that moment, knowing when the painting is done for now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm captivated visually by a lot. In these pen paintings, you sense the surfaces of things, both natural and artificial, and in their construction. What we can see both with the naked eye and also assisted with various enhanced views through images produced by cameras or scanners or images available on the internet. Examples of this would include fabric weaving patterns, the delicate veins of leaves, the repeated intersections of a wicker chair seat, the isobars of a weather map, the tiling found in certain cultures, dance notation, and the myriad number of knots and tangles available to us daily. I developed working sketches on graph paper of patterns that intrigued me, simple one-offs which lend the idea of the surface. The sketches are all based on a gridded format, but loosely, as a method of viewing the complex world in a slightly less structured, humane fashion, allowing for unexplainably neural and skewed shapes, somewhat arithmetic, yet at once poetic. In our minds, we may sense some sort of logical, symmetrical perfection of pattern. However, what actually exists is limited by its being a part of our sooty, lumpy world. I then use the sketch as a roadmap for the final painting, reproducing the grid of the graph paper in a hand-drawn version in pencil on 300-pound hot press of watercolor paper, upon which I then paint in the, on, paint in the occupied squares of the sketch, using a combination of paint markers, brushes, and dip pens to apply gouache and acrylic paints. The resulting painting is then a reproduction of a sketch of an image, imperfect in its logic, skewed in its harmony, and obviously hand constructed square by square, brick upon brick. Okay. Mm. focuses on drawing, um, which is my pastime, providing a meditative basis to my art practice and forming the seed for further work in printmaking. <clears throat> um, the drawings in the show are a result of a daily practice of exploring the materials, color, and systems that create patterns. These patterns stem from textile influences while often referencing or including handwritten words, landscape, and botany. Like textiles, these drawings are based on a simple system of repeating shapes, color, and color applications in a prescribed order and include woven lines, 
tessellated shapes and texture at the fore of the design. In my process, there's a degree of choice, a set of colors or a size of background materials. I enjoy working with a set structure such as a grid, matrix, or type of mark, and then exploring ways to apply the structure as a puzzle to be solved. At the onset, the process is improvisational and inventive. Once the system is designed, it is followed to cover the chosen space. I find tranquility in mark making and the visual result of that action. A driving factor in the process is a curiosity in how the colors and materials will combine and watching the pleasing and often surprising results. Mm. There's a great deal of craft in the application, but there lies the whimsical outcome. In my various um, works in the show, I have a series called Color Wheels, which are a part of a color chart series um, that comes from <clears throat> being interested in mixing colors. So what I do is I, um, every time I get a set of materials, like a set of colors, say a set of colored pencils or paints, I'll do a color chart to see how those things mix together. Mm. And sometimes mm. I'll do another color chart to see how those mix with other things I already have. Mm. And then I, it occurred to me, well, this is kind of boring, these boxes and rows and grids. What if I do these shapes of these? So <laughs> these things over here, like the, the world thing there, is a color chart of a series of things, but instead of a grid, it's a world, and so is that other one that's next to it. So, <clears throat> um, the crossword series, which is like this one, another one in the hallway, um, I'm handwriting words and numbers in a grid of lines. I work in the negative spaces, outlining the color in them to make abstract patterns. The words are pulled from various sources, usually things I hear while I'm writing them like the radio or baseball game or conversations in a crowd of people. Mm. They are sometimes <clears throat> things from things I read and transcribe. The words become somewhat insignificant at the end, but it's hard to try to decipher what they are. And the more things that are these <clears throat> are made by overlapping two patterns and then filling in spaces between and um, so the moire is a, um, if, you, if you overlay a pattern at certain angles, you get this moire effect. And it, it's, um, it's uh, in, from Wikipedia, <laughs> you can say, in mathematics, physics, and art, moire patterns are interference patterns that can be produced when an opaque ruled pattern with transparent gaps is overlaid on another similar pattern. For the moire interference pattern to appear, the two patterns must not be completely identical, but rather displaced, rotated, or have slightly different pitch or hmm. angle. So uh, they'll have one pattern uh, usually in the ones I'm doing, I'm, I'm following a contour of um, a watercolor wash or acrylic wash underneath um, of the various shapes in that wash. And then over it, I'll lay it a, a pattern of um, a wavy line or some circles or in the case of the one over there, some eyeballs, some sort of um, biscuit shapes. How do you spell more? M O I R E with an oh. accent over the E. They look kind of watery. If they're on fabric, it looks real watery. Oh. Yeah, like taffeta. Mm -hmm. That's a moire effect. And it's just the way they move. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so when Ken and I applied for this show, we put in an application. We had to apply separately, but our application. Um, was important that we were wanting to show together. So um, these words are what we put toward that application. These works on paper are created in the daily drawing practice. 
that we share. We both work with pattern. Ken's work derives from the poetics of mathematical systems or theory, while my work is textile derived, although his is often textile derived. <laughs> <laughs> our systems are different, our results are different and separate, but the symbiosis of our work is unmistakable. Their works are improvisational and inventive. Old style crafts such as weaving and quilting come to form while explored in a new light. We have an abiding interest in producing art based on self-imposed systems to which we strictly adhere. The result is a work which, depending on the parameters of the rules, produces something not quite imagined at the outset. This drawing practice is how we spend most of our time together and what brings us and keeps us together and gives us a lot of joy. Mm. And we call all these things drawings although, um, because they're on paper, although they may look a little bit more like paintings um, because they're somewhat of a hybrid. There's a lot of paint material in them um, the size is significant to the locations the work is done. In our living room or out on the road. Portability is a consideration. In these small works, we are using prepared papers with watercolor, ink, acrylic, gouache, or flash. Then working on those in acrylic and gel pens, various markers, and colored pencils. <clears throat> we both make other work. Ken's a painter, and I'm a printmaker. Um, I also make books. Um, and these methods don't travel out of the studio well. The daily practice, drawing practice, feeds our other work, but it also a different speed. Brevity is key. Producing two to three drawings a week allows for ideas to be worked out and artistic progress to be made. The small works are also highly accessible to our audience because we are able to share frequently and keep interest going. There is contrast to you know, a slower process of doing mm -hmm. a couple paintings a year. Yeah. And doing prints you know, take just a long time in the studio. So there we have it. You know, mm -hmm. like we're you know interested in your questions or comments or anything. Mm -hmm. And we have Demonstration stuff if you're curious about it. Mm. Oh, Absolutely. Question. When, if, do you guys ever get like blocked? I know you guys sit together and draw, mm -hmm. right? Do you ever yeah. set parameters like we're only going to use a couple of different colors and oh, yeah. or you know stuff like that? I mean, I I don't. I'm not a drawer. I'm not a sketcher, mm -hmm. so it would it would be very hard for me to do that. But I do that with my textile art, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, do we get blocked? Well, I would normally say no, but recently that's no. <laughs> I think it's just the stress I'm going in through with some other, you know, stuff I have to get done. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. Um, as far as daily practice, are do you do each piece in a day, or do you spend a number of days on pieces till they're done? Number of days. Yeah. I used to be, I used to try to do in a day. I had, this is probably about 10 years ago I started doing a daily drawing. And I made a stack of 365 sheets of paper and I tried to do, fill, you know, finish something every day. And this is when I was working full time and I was busy. And, but I still wanted to try to do one every day and I even dated the back of them before. <laughs> Everybody uh, got them, mm -hmm. and I did. I, I got through that, and I did it for a few years. And I was like, "This is ridiculous." <laughs> First of all, I can't. I don't have time, you know, to get to put toward it. So I stopped trying to do one every day and put more toward drawing. But I do every day. So do you? Uh, do you have a particular amount of time you spend, or do you just go like, "Okay, I'm done for today." Um, I. I don't have a particular amount of time. We, we, we tend to do it in the evening together. Yeah. Um, yeah, we sit in the living room together on either end of the sofa. Yeah. And so we've been doing this for a while. I, what I liked about Gwen was she was, she was doing these daily drawings 
And here I was doing a couple of paintings a year. <laughs> but I had all these ideas that I wanted to get out in some way. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to move faster. And so I started drawing. Mm -hmm. And sitting with Gwen, it became easier. So all the drawings, I, I, for a little while there, I was doing not one a day, but maybe one every two days, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just ended up with a stack of drawings, you know, that was fun to produce. I've never felt like um, I've had a creative block. Never. It's just never happened. I always thought there's always too much, you know, that I don't have enough time for everything that I want to do. Yeah. So it's given me more of an outlet over time, certainly. Yeah. But now I'm slowing down again because of my, my uh, drawings and paintings are getting bigger once again, too. Oh, and it doesn't help to be bigger than me by watching the baking show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something that you're not interested in, is that what you're saying? <laughs> You need to put something on that you're not interested in. Yeah, yeah. like baseball. Well, you're much, yeah, you're much baseball. And you don't have to keep no. up with the game. You don't have to time. watch it. Yeah. You can listen. Yeah. 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 Slow as molasses. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, um, as you're working, um, you know, when you're sitting on the couch, do you? Occasionally, but it's not. Sometimes you get nosy. Like, oh yeah, sad. what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you using those colors? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. And sometimes he says, "I like the way you shake your pen." When <laughs> <laughs> has a habit of when the paint when the pen runs dry, she just tosses it across the room. <laughs> I think I won't do that very often. No, but I wait for it. Yeah, we these acrylic pens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I can't. I should have said this on the floor. Um, but I'm curious, like, you're, I mean, you talk about the symbiosis of your work and how it's different, yet obviously there's so many similarities in the mm -hmm. um, focus of what you guys do with patterns. Um, has that has it all, like always been that way, or like when did your work start to become more cohesive in that way? And like, how have your how has your work influenced each other? I guess is the question. It's, I don't know. It's a tough one. I mean, when we first we first met in a in a, a, a drawing co-op. Yeah. Yeah. So it was the artwork that was attracted from the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've always done abstract work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I was doing this daily drawing practice before mm -hmm. I met Ken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so there were there were things that Gwen did before we even met that are similar to things that I've done in the past also. Mm -hmm. you know, which made a lot of sense to both of us. You know. Yeah, I think it was the artwork that drew us together really. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that some things have influenced me in, in that um, Ken was at one time doing shaped canvas, not canvas, mm -hmm. they, weren't can they were panels, he would cut them up and it was interesting shapes. And I like that, and so I started doing these ink washes as backgrounds that were shapes. And that's, oh yeah, I like that. That influenced, oh, yeah, it, influenced yeah. me, um, that's something that I think I've maybe been more attracted doing to doing abstract work because of being with you. I used to mm -hmm. sort of have more hybrids. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I used to do a lot of birds, mm -hmm. um, but I've always been doing patterns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were you drawn to numbers mathematically in your early life, or did you just go right to patterns? Or are they related? They're related, I think, yeah, for me. I mean, I did well in math in school, and, um, and it, it seemed easy for me. And I, I certainly I'm, I'm drawn to patterns in anything that I see. Um, usually I... Um, if I had had a camera back then, you know, I would have taken right. photographs of things right. that I saw, but I do that now, 
you know, if I see something in nature that looks kind of fascinating to me that I hadn't really considered before, mm -hmm. I'll take a photograph of it, you know, to have some sort of source. Yeah, go back to it. Not to me. <laughs> well, you skipped the number part and went right to the yeah. Two, yeah. Yeah, can't do the numbers. <laughs> Unless I'm just writing them because they're interesting shapes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I've done that. something expressively uh, and then I'll outline the fair shape and then I'll use this and I, I go back oh, show us directly too. from it. Yeah. Can we see? Uh -huh. yeah. There's something about grid paper that's just so delightful. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I mean, I, I, had, a, I had a teacher, uh, probably an art teacher, like when I was in elementary school and I did this uh, like on grid paper. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, you can't do that. And I thought, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It just made sense to me. So, oh, man. Yeah. 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 Now, that's extremely curved. Yeah. But a lot of your stuff is a curve. It's more geometric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of it is. Yeah. yeah. So but it's a combination of two. I, I had a, let's see, I was taking a class at MCAT at one time, years ago now. And... Um, Somebody in there said, uh, you're, you're too strict with your lines. I mean, it's, you know, can't you be more organic in some way? And I said, well, let me give it a shot. And let me see if I can combine the two. So, you know, I can use a really small grid and do that. And so you can't really see it otherwise. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So this is actually, uh, this painting is right over the fireplace. Mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Did you start, so, so... One motif is just multiply, multiply, multiply. Yes. Uh -huh. So, do you know how big is your original motif in that? Or can yeah, I tell? I, yeah, I can. Actually, there uh, there are lines in here, uh, really small lines. So each repeated pattern is like about this big. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I just repeat it and repeat it. Right. Repeat it. Right. But I don't want to look. Uh, Specifically repeated, I you know I want it to look a little more like you can see patterns in nature like the you know the shell of the uh, turtle and you know mm -hmm. veins of leaves and things like that. Yeah. This is not so much a question, it's just a comment, but like when it blows my mind that these are not like computer generated or like printed, like it's crazy to me that you draw those pieces. Like it's every day I come here. I'm like, this is insane. They're so cool. <laughs> how did you come across my and like, how, like tell me more about it? Was it's an accident. So cool. I was doing like contour drawing, which is just like falling in the edges. And, um, so I, I even came up with a little demo because I wasn't sure there was people that had. So, um, so first I do like an ink wash background, and then I, um, oh, so do you have a prescribed shape that you're going to do, or are you just kind of live, kind of intuitively just making a shape with your wash? Uh, yeah, it's really just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> and then, you know, I was doing these drawings that had these uh, contours like this. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then I thought, well, what happens if I do another pattern over the contour? Mm -hmm. Well, for interest, you know. Oh, but what if I fill in every other square? <laughs> and this one didn't get finished, but and that's how that started. 
It mm. was really just like that. And then it kind of got crazy with it. <laughs> How long is that something? I mean, especially like one like this, like that's quite a bigger. Like, How long does that take? Um, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> These demos that I did took me all sweet today. Well, no, a couple hours. Oh, so, yeah. you know, it took a while. That's fast, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so. The way you describe the process, it sounds like when you start, you have no idea what the end result is going to be. When you get to the end, do you ever stand back and like, are you astonished or surprised? Oh, oh yeah. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, who did that? Yeah. And I also feel like we did it. Oh, mm -hmm. That's not what I expected. No, right. It feels like yeah. some medium came through. Ah. <laughs> sometimes. Mm -hmm. so, and then, you know, after the first couple, it's like, oh, okay, I'm doing that. I'll, 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 I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> and now, I, now it's me. But yeah. at first, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you talk about flow? <laughs> like you must get in the flow. Yeah, especially because otherwise you're going to be fighting yes. yourself. You just have to. I assume mm -hmm. you get in that flow state where okay, and this will lead to this, and this will lead to this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think what's nice about um, having a partner who also does the same thing as so you have permission to spend the time. <laughs> like there isn't there isn't um like somebody who's wants to do something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you know you're doing that again? I mean uh, yeah, oh it's your doodles. <laughs> so you know now it's like it's taken seriously. Yeah. It's um, it's shared. Shared it's interest. It's both like baseball. So, yeah, so the flow is just sort of like, you just sort of, you know, it just yeah. goes. You just get into it. And then you it's want very it. Meditative. You want the flow. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, if you miss a couple of days, you go and, uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of happened is, um, I haven't, I've had a number of days where I haven't been able to draw, and I feel okay. like, no, and I, and I, Finish some stuff and now I don't have anything going. And I'm yeah. like, what do we do? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Have you um, ever observed a, 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 a perceptible physiological, I mean, I think you're going to say yes because it's what you were just talking about in a way, but do you have a, some sort of way of monitoring or even measuring? It's as weird as that sounds like heart rate or, you know, kind of other things, oh. consciousness of that, can you, in, as part of your talk, you know, just being aware of that um, as you're working or like how, how you felt when you started working and how you felt when you ended working for that day or... Mm. Well... Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing yeah. I can gauge is like, uh, eyes are sore and my neck has a my mm -hmm. hands are cramped. So like in that way, feeling worse after work. You're really tired, you know, but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in terms of the relaxed feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just nervous system kind of. Hmm. I bet if you allowed yourselves to be hooked up to various yeah. things, you know, mm -hmm. you would, you would def there would definitely be a vulnerable. Oh. I think yeah. that the anxiety meter goes down. For sure. It definitely does, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you lose track of time. Mm -hmm. Rather than the big picture, you imagine each iteration and then it grows. And then when you're done, you look at it and admire it, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would say so. And, and that's different than the type of art where you're painting a scene with a person where they have the big picture and they go to the smaller detail. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think Steve asked me at one point, like, how do I, how do I begin a painting? 
and I, I say, I start in the lower left-hand corner. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'm paying attention to the minuscule things that, that are occurring in, in just that little section, and then adding to it. Well, well, the thing I always found striking about what we do with the grid paper is that by doing every line by hand, mm -hmm. inevitably, and by intention, none of them are perfect. Right. And if, if one looks closely at any single pattern, as, as you just showed uh, someone here, mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not really perfect boxes. They're not no, really no. perfect straight lines. Oh, yeah, they're yeah. all off a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah uh, because I do draw a grid and pencil on all of these panels, mm -hmm. you know, at the very beginning. And I've thought about using a, a ruler or a straight edge to make it a much more perfect line. And I just don't do it. I can't. You know, mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem mm -hmm. right to me. It seems more natural to do it like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting the conversations you will have with your piece and your self, because you are you're the piece. But the pieces will tell you what they want to be. If you, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. If you're having yeah. a chat with your pigments and yes. you're having a chat with your lines. Oh yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Something I would like to ask is, do you have a favorite? Do you have a particular piece? Oh, I do. You do? It's, <laughs> a, it, it's the one I completed last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's generally the one that <laughs> just goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Your best painting ever. It's the best painting ever. Yeah, I don't <laughs> tell it to Greg. No. <laughs> I'm not like that. I Do you ever get it done and then think, like, I'm going to turn it sideways, I'm going to turn it upside okay. down? So it's a direction that either, your tensures are square, so they're easy yeah. enough to, I mean, that was I, it a much longer job that I was holding the left and right and you're telling me to stand over it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, or, or is that, or are they kind of intense in terms of, or if you're starting, if you're just writing this, yeah. you're going to do that. Yeah. There's one direction, yeah. but there's never a time where it's like, you know, if I turn it this way, kind of like in the old days when you pick a slide and you flip it around and you see it from reverse, and they say, I was a printmaker, so I know how to do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, it's like describing drawing versus painting. That's a semantical kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, I think the line is getting even blurrier, though. I mean, there definitely was a line in the 70s, mm -hmm. for sure, between craft and art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's it's definitely become much more blurry. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, in, my, in, 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 the, in the sense that we're talking about, it's like the application mm -hmm. And you do embroider on it. Put two stitching blocks together too. I, I don't. I don't think of myself as textile artist. Mm -hmm. It'd be fun to fill a third thing in and title them, say, some of the games that you were listening to. As just a casual baseball fan, like. Yeah. This you were listening to, the, you know, the twins versus the, <laughs> yeah. the, the Tigers. Well, some of the, um, the word drawings I've done have been definitely baseball. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. have baseball titles. <laughs> and Did you know, that would be and can you tell if you look at them? Usually not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you come up with the titles of your work? Is it just a feeling it just kind of happens, or is there? For me, it's that way, yeah. 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 I, I actually, um, I'm interested in how language um, uses um, poetry. And so if I come up with a line that sounds sort of interesting in whatever way, 